Welcome to Pure Hustle Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Rolando. And we're here for another Monday mini-sode. Yeah, Monday minis are where we get to talk about a specific topic for a shorter amount of time. Hopefully some of you who are uh, listeners to our podcast that releases every Wednesday, our longer form hour plus podcast, uh, have come over now to YouTube because we dropped one special uh, you know, to the podcast side so people can kind of get a taste of that. Uh, so hopefully more of you have come over. Um, we've had some cool ones. I think more people went to the podcast than the YouTube though. That's okay. But that's, that's okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, we're, uh, we're, we're excited to do these. And today we're talking about one of our favorite things, which is garage sales and not letting the, uh, the garage sale interaction just be a one and done. And then you're done with it. We don't want, we don't want to let it end there because what happens at the garage sale has ramifications potentially and, and could have long-term impacts that'll bring you way more profit to your reselling business. I thought you were going to say what happens to the garage sale stays at the garage sale. But yeah, I wanted I wanted you to think that's what I was going to okay. say. All right. So, and the reason I bring this up is Mike and I have had some of our biggest scores post-garage sale. The people that we met at the garage sale and then what happened after the fact. So what we want to do in this short mini-sode is give you some tips about how you can use, you know, your interactions and, and and your ability to network to bring more profit from that garage sale as you end up making better deals after the fact. So one of the first things you should always be willing to do is just simple greeting, right? No one's going to talk to you about what they have. You know, it's, it, this happens all the time, like at community garage sales, you know, you'll find an item or two and then you talk to the person. They're like, oh, I should have brought all these over. I had some at my house, but I just, you know, I didn't know how much it can fit in my car. Well, if you never engaged the person or said good morning or said, how are you? You would have never had that conversation and you would have missed out on all that profit that was in some storage unit that they were unable to pack that morning because things got too hectic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you just being willing to be nice, to say hi kind of look around and see what they have and be, be willing to, uh, you know, talk to them is, is huge. That's a big one. Um, one of the things that I've, we, we kind of joke about a lot of the times is the people who pull up in their car. A lot of times they don't even get out. They just like, yell, do you got any Legos? Uh, no. And they drive away uh, or someone, you know, they run up to like watches, use watches, watches. Nope. Okay. And they leave. Now I get it. If you're really niched in and maybe you're not even a reseller, you're just like, this is, I'm a collector of a certain thing. I understand that. But if you're listening to Pure Hustle Podcast, you're probably a reseller and you may even be niched in. You may be like, you know what? I make a killing on watches. I collect watches. I know the right kind of watches to get. But if you're willing to spend just a few moments looking around at what else they have, you might find that there's something else there that if you've been reselling for a while, you're like, oh, there's, there's actually some money here. So maybe it's not my normal niche, but there's money here. And in fact, for me, a lot of times, some of my most profitable things, things I didn't know anything about. I open up a random box. I'm like, Oh, this is like a weird, like, you know, sign that you have here is like, oh, yeah, this is I, I used to work for this company. I used yeah. to work for Snap on. And so we've got all these signs and oh, I got some more and they start pulling them Wait, out. And you're like, that actually happened to me. Yeah, I know. I've, and I've, I've had I've had like similar, garage full of Snap on. Yeah, stuff. you've had Snap on. I've had I had some AT&T signs like that. Um, oh, that's right. So you never know what you can find. And, and nobody's pulling up saying, hey, do you have AT&T long distance phone call signs? No, OK, I'm out. Right. But I've made I've made so much money on those signs, right? Or same thing like DJ equipment. I found a bunch of random DJ equipment at, at one garage sale. Nobody's pulling up saying DJ equipment. Nope. But if, had I not have looked for that, I would have missed out on thousands of dollars that I've made on that DJ equipment. So don't be so narrowly focused. Now it is good to be, to have your niche, to know a specific field, but spend a little bit of time just poking around in some boxes. Cause maybe you're like, Oh, look at all these unopened Pokemon cards. Yeah. You never know. You just never know. Now always ask if everything we wanted to sell was brought out because what ends up happening is at a garage sale, right? Some people, right. They, they're willing to, you know, move their stuff for cheap. I would say 90% of the time that's the case, but sometimes they had stuff that they wanted to sell and they held back because they, they saw all the people come in, especially here in San Diego. Like if, if you have a garage at seven, people are there at four thirty or five, like super early. It's crazy. And then they they begin to be a little reluctant about putting stuff out. So they won't put it out. And what's happened in my experience is like, hey, you know, it seems like you had this stuff out here. This actually happened to me uh, when I was uh, in Orange County. And uh, unfortunately, I left all my business cards mm. at home. 
And uh, I didn't feel comfortable saying, hey, can I give you my number? Because I don't think they would have called me. Like, there's something. We'll talk about the business card later on. But it's, it's a tangible thing. But, you know, they had like a Game Genie book. And they had a Mario Brothers book mm-hmm. or something. And I said, hey, it seems that you have like vintage like books here. Does that mean you have a lot of vintage video games uh, that you, maybe you were thinking about selling? And he's like, yeah, I was going to, but not yet. Mm. And so that was a perfect opportunity for me to, you know, if I had my business cards, be like, hey, you know what? I'm sure you're not ready to sell yet, but here's my business card. Give me a call when you're ready to sell. Right. And that's happened so, so many times. Or sometimes uh, what's happened is like they bring everything out and I look in the garage and there's like boxes. I'm like, hey, well, just wonder what's the deal. Those boxes are supposed to be part of the garage uh, garage sale. And they're like, yeah, we wanted to sell these, but... uh, we're not ready to yet. Uh, we're maybe next garage sale. And I, I'll tell them, Hey, here's my card. If you ever want to sell it before the garage sale and save that trouble, uh, give me a call and then we'll see what we can do. And I'll get a call and sure enough, a nice profitable inventory. Yeah, that's really good. And, and kind of even just knowing like what their reason for their garage sale is can, can allow you to have a good connection potentially, or mm-hmm. just know how to interact and negotiate at the garage sale. Uh, Cause maybe you ask them, you know, or, or you just deal with, listening maybe you're just listening to the conversations they're having you know we've talked about phrases where if they say like yeah whatever doesn't sell is going to goodwill okay that's a good sign for you oh, right that's a very good um, sign but then maybe just asking simple things like oh so are you moving are you guys moving uh oh are you trying to downsize you know simple things like that gives you an idea of okay why are they doing this because i've had times where it's like hey oh wow like uh are, are you guys are you guys selling this stuff or oh, did, did, did you used to own a gym, right? There's somebody who had a whole bunch of equipment and just that conversation is like, oh yeah, actually we do. Uh, and we're, we're, um, you know, getting rid of a bunch of stuff cause we're buying new equipment. Oh sweet. Yeah, here's my business card. I might be willing to pick some of this up. So it, by knowing the reason for their garage sale could potentially open up for more things. Cause maybe they're like, yeah, we do this. We're probably going to have another one next month. Um, and and like Orlando said, like maybe they'll pull out things they didn't pull out this time. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, before your next one, if you if you have more of these, I'll, I'd love to come over and take a look before you do the garage sale. Or if they say something like, yeah, all of this stuff has got to go again, that 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 lets you know, hey, you can really wheel and deal. And again, say, hey, since I'm already picking up this much stuff, you got more you're wanting to clean out, too. I can I can take a look at that um, because, again, a lot of times sometimes it's it's they'll they'll make that offer like i'm I'm not trying to pick up too much and somebody's like well what are you looking for i'm like well you know just kind of looking around anything in, in particular and i'm like well it's none of the stuff out here but do you have such and such and yeah sure enough they're willing to come and grab stuff out of their house because sometimes they're just like trying to move things and they don't know what's going to sell but if they realize that hey you're looking for i don't know whatever it is baby toys they're like got a ton of those in the back hold on so don't be afraid to tell them. Don't be so narrow like we talked about, but don't be afraid to tell people what you are looking for because they might have that and figure out why they're doing the garage sale. Because if it's like, yeah, my son just moved to college. We're trying to clean out his room. And then, yeah, that might again clear out the, or, or like indicate like, oh, really? D- does he have any video games? Yeah. yeah. You know, those type, those types of clues can give you an idea of what you should be asking or how you should be negotiating. Yeah. What, my, one of my best scores in the early days was I, I came across a garage sale and it was a Harley stuff. And this is when Harley stuff was selling for like good money. And it was just a table full and no one was there. It was just me. This is before like all the big, like uh reselling YouTubes really took off. And uh, it was like two years before the podcast. And I remember like going and there was Harley jeans, Harley jeans, Harley jeans. And there was Harley shirt, Harley shirt. I probably that day I paid 200 and I picked up like a hundred items. It was crazy. Think about that. That means I paid like $2 a piece. And I remember asking her, her name is, you know, I'm not going to share her name, but from that point, even on my phone, she's still known as Harley lady. She's moved on now. She's, uh, she's moved on. Not she passed away, but she's moved to another state. But I remember asking her, I was like, Hey, so, and, and this was innocent. Like I, I wasn't a a reseller. I just want to know. I was like, Hey, where all this Harley stuff come from? And she's like, well, you know, unfortunately my husband passed away a year ago and I really don't know what to do with this stuff. I kind of want to move it because I'm trying to move. And, and, you know, there's still even more. And I said, Hey, you know, I'm just starting off reselling. I know I bought a lot, but if you have more, I'm willing to, you know, buy outside of the garage. So she's like, sure. Uh, come on by. So I went to the next garage show she had and I bought more Harley stuff. And then she's like, Hey, why don't you just come by? You know, it's not a garage. show. just come by in the middle of the week and, and we'll go through everything. And then she said, you know, I have more stuff. You know, if you don't mind helping me run to the garage sale, 
you know, you can also have a pick of whatever is there and I'll give you a good price for it. Right. So that ended up, Oh my goodness. I want to say I made like five to $10,000 oh. net from that whole. And that was like a, two months. And that was the very, very beginning of my reselling <clears throat> part-time before the podcast ever started. And so the last thing here, and this, uh, you know, we need to be like sponsored by Vista print or somebody <laughs> business cards. Yeah, it will be, card. I think it is the single best investment I've ever made in reselling. Spent $50, got, I don't know, 2000 business cards or something. That's a lot of business cards. It'll yeah. go a long way. <clears throat> It'll, and I got single sided, just has my phone number and my name. It says reseller buy and sell. That's all it has. Mm. Doesn't say anything else, but that single card, I will, anytime I make a purchase of a bunch of items or I know that they have more, I don't drop it at every garage sale. But my biggest scores have come from that business card. Every single biggest score. Uh, even even for, you know, um, individuals that, you know, they found out about me through another way. I still leave on my business card. And it's something that they put in their fridge or they keep somewhere. I'd rather do that than leave my phone number because it's tangible. Uh, I, for example, my Rain Spooner connection. They call me like every six months and I buy tons of shirts from them. Uh, what they always tell me is like, hey, Orlando, you know, every time we go to our fridge, your business card is there. And it's just a reminder of like, if we ever have too much rain spooner, because they're rain spooner collectors yep. to give you a call. And sure enough, they give me a call and it's always worked out. So make sure you get those business cards. Even if you're part time, it's a small investment. You never know. It may be what drives you to end up being a full time seller. Yeah. And one of the tips you can use with that is just get a Google voice number, right? You don't need to use your personal Correct. phone number. Uh, use a Google voice number. That way you can kind of differentiate what are business calls. You're not paying for it. Uh, you don't have to worry about some random person texting you or calling you on your regular phone. Uh, and so that's a way of protecting yourself in that sense. But then also yeah, you've got a way of connecting with calling, texting with to and from uh, potential, you know, people who are going to sell you items you're going to make a lot of money for. So yeah. Business cards all the way. So don't let things end in the garage sale. There's so much potential profit, even greater in the garage sale by making those connections. And with that being said, make sure to be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Lates. Peace.